Hallelujah. It's such a blessing to be in the presence of God. Hallelujah. All the time. It's such a blessing. Amen. If you have your Bible, let's turn to Galatians chapter 1. The book of Galatians chapter 1. The book of Galatians chapter 1. We read in the beginning from verse 11. And I'll turn this up this day. Galatians 1 and verse 11. He said, But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I never received it of man, never was I told it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. <coughs> For ye have heard of my conversation, or my conversation in time past in the Jews, religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and caught me by his grace. And the last verse 16, to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. I'll be speaking today what I titled Separated. Separated. The greatest thing that happened to anyone born again is to be separated. The greatest thing that happened to anyone who becomes born again, even right now, is to be separated. And someone would might ask, separated from what? Separated from the world. Separated from this world. But separated to him. That's to be detached from the world and to be connected to him. Until a person is detached, it cannot be joined. Like, you know, a marriage, a man needs to detach in order to be joined to his or to his wife. That's how it is. Until we are separated from the world, we cannot be separated unto God. That's why Paul was speaking in that verse of the scripture in verse 15 in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 15. He said, But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, he separated me. What was he saying? Set me apart. God who set me apart. God who marked me off from the rest of mankind. God who marked me out in the purpose of his for future mission. That's to say God who called me. That's what Paul was saying. God, who called me? He called me from time begin. That's to say, even before the creation of the world, God has separated me. I love to read in Romans chapter 1 and verse 1, talking about the same thing, but in a different way. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 1, Paul was speaking there, he said, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. Called to be an apostle. Separated unto the gospel of God. That's the one purpose. He was called for the purpose of the gospel. So, what was Paul trying to establish? That he was destined from birth. He was destined from birth to preach the gospel or to preach the gospel of Christ. He wasn't saying or trying to, you know, say that he had actually called him in his infancy to the walk. That's not what he was saying. He didn't say God has actually called him in his infancy to do the work because he was a child. He's a baby. There's no way a baby can do the work. I love what Galatians said. He said, as long as a child 
though he is on the earth, but as long as he is a child, give her a nut from a servant. He's still on that too, does she? So, all the time that God has separated Paul from his mother's womb, he was a child. He had not begun the work, but there was a predestination on the life of the man. That God designed him to be an important instrument in his hands. And spreading the gospel, that was what he was trying to establish. That before time, before the foundation of the world, that God has predestinated him. God has marked him out to preach the gospel. I love what Romans said. He said, while we were yet without strength, God died for us, or Jesus died for us. When we did not know him, he already knew us. He knew everything about us. And before the foundation of the world, he has already marked it out. Like I was sharing in the midweek, I said, God already saw our future. Even before we looked like one that will become like a child of God. He knew everything about us. And therefore, he separated us. He marked us out for the assignment or the service to which he has called us. That's what Isaiah was also speaking about. In Isaiah 49, Isaiah was speaking, Isaiah the prophet was also speaking about how God had called him. Isaiah 49 and verse 1, he said, Listen, oh, I then, unto me, and hearken, you people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb. The Lord hath called me from the womb. The thing I'm going to do, or the things that I'm doing, is not strange to God. He knew about them. My deeds and my works, God is aware of them. He said to them in Isaiah 49 verse 1, He called me from the womb, from the powers of my mother, and he made mention of my name. So, you are not unrecognized in the heart of God as a child of God. He knew everything about you. That's what he was also telling Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 and verse 5. He said, before I found thee, I knew you. I know everything about you. I've engraved you in the palm of my hands. Your voice continually before me. He said, before I found thee in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I ordained you to be a prophet to the nation. Or somebody saying, oh, I've not been called to be a pastor. I've not been called to be a prophet. I've not been called to be an apostle. But I can tell you, you've been called as a child of God. The day you gave your heart to Jesus, you enter into that assignment as one who is called. You are called as a child of God. Oh, talking about a man called John the Baptist. John the Baptist was separated even before he was born. Even before he was conceived. An angel appeared to the fire, father Zechariah in Luke chapter 1 and says, Zechariah, oh, the prayer has been heard. A man has sat God faithful, faithfully and his wife Elizabeth, but they had no child. And the Bible said, God appeared, or an angel came and said, Zechariah, your prayer has been heard. God is bringing the son to you, and this son will be mighty. He will bring joy to the nation. He will gladden the heart of men. And Zechariah was afraid because he thought, oh, how can this thing be? It's impossible. But God said, I will bring it to pass. And actually, John the Baptist came. But what I'm trying to say is this. These men were designed for the work which they performed. They were designed by God to perform these works. And they did perform the work. But it began with predestination or predestined them to do those things. Going about the man called Saul before he became Paul. Saul, who became Paul, was a blasphemer. Let's take it back like this. Saul was a blasphemer. Saul was a persecutor. Saul did havoc in the church. A lot of people died because of Paul or because of Saul. But the thing is, God looked at the greater picture. Hallelujah. He saw something better than what he did. God saw Paul beyond what he was doing, though he was persecuting the church, though he was killing the people of God. He was called out from 
the life of sin to the service of God. Paul, though committed havoc, did all the things he did. The Bible said, he said, all the things I did, I did it in ignorance. I thought I was having God. But I didn't know I was, you know, frustrating the work of God. He said, I did all of that in the days of ignorance. The Bible said, in the days, in the days of ignorance, God overlooks. But now that you are aware, doing those things will be bringing the wrath of God upon one's life. But what I'm trying to say, Paul was a persecutor of the church. But in the grand picture, picture of God, Paul was separated to him. No wonder when God sent Ananias to, to him, God sent Ananias to Saul. I said, Ananias, go. I'm sending you to somebody. He sent me Saul. And probably the moment Ananias heard it, he said, no, this persecutor. Lord, how can you be sending me to this kind of person? A killer. And God said, no, don't be afraid. Jesus said, don't be afraid. In the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, you can find it there. Probably Ananias first saw was a killer. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that to feed that. And was not qualified to do the assignment or to do the work. But God said, one thing I love so well, in that verse of the scripture, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, and verse 15, Go that way, for he had, for, for is a chosen vessel. And Leas, don't be afraid. The person you are talking about is a new person. I've visited him. His future, I already know about it. What he's going to accomplish, I've already mapped it out. I know everything about it. And Leas, don't be afraid. Go! Go that way, for he is a chosen vessel. That's to say, he has been separated from me. He has been chosen for me. Acts chapter 9 and verse 15. He has been chosen for me, for my sake. Go that way. Meaning, God's method or criteria for calling people to fulfill divine purpose is not the same way man does it. It's not the same way man will do things. Man's selection is different from God's selection. When God picks a man, he doesn't see his inadequacies. He overlooks them and fulfills his plan in the life of the person. Because going by what Paul did, Paul would not have been able to preach the gospel. But God, who knew everything about him and his future, said, I'm going to fulfill my plan and the purpose through this man. So the way man thinks is not the way God thinks. Probably men have written, off, written you off, but God has not written you off. Probably men has forsaken you, but God has not forsaken you. Even in your worst level, God has not abandoned you. God is still with you. Because there is a purpose of His in your life. Because you've been called. What I'm saying is, there are people who might not be doing what they've been created for to do right now. There are people who might not be doing what they've been created for right now. But does it mean that God, in his infinite wisdom, didn't know what he did when he predestinated them? There are people who are not going about the things God has called them to do or what God has said about them right now. But God knew how to bring his plan to pass in their life. God know how to bring it together because it's the God of all flesh. It's the God, the God of all, the mighty God. He know how to bring his word to, to pass. He knows his plan better than any person. So God in his infinite wisdom and plan has separated them for his service. God know how to bring them to pass. Oh, I listened to a man's testimony. He said, oh, people respect him and call him names today. Oh, people call him an apostle. People call him and say, oh, thank God for your life. Thank God for all that God is doing through you. He said, nobody knew the secret. He said, the secret was because the mother was praying for him. The mother was praying for him because God has already shown the mother who this person will be in the future. And the mother began to pray for him, even when it didn't look like it. He was separated from his mother's womb. But it didn't look like it. Probably it was like a gunstar. It was not like somebody who fit into the picture that God has shown or God showed to her. But she kept praying. She kept praying. 
until God met the man. He encountered God and today is a blessing to the whole world. What I'm saying, as a child of God, you've been separated. You've been separated from your mother's womb to fulfill an assignment. You may not look like that right now. But don't be, don't be despair. Don't give up. Don't think, oh, what God said will not come to pass. Keep holding on to what he has said. And he will bring his plan to pass in your life. He will bring his plan to pass in your life. God is, God is often training up people in a remarkable manner for future usefulness. For future usefulness. For future usefulness. There are people God is training up right now. All the things that they are going through, all the things they are doing is part of God's plan. It's part of the grand plan of God for that usefulness that he has prearranged. For all the things he has ordained for them to fulfill. His eyes is upon them until the time come. When the time come, they will fulfill the plan of God. When the time come, they will enter into that plan of God for their life. Oh, thank God for men like Paul who said, I have been separated from my mother's womb. Giving those who you think might not be able to come to the light. There are so many persons around us who we might think that they, this person is not useful, but not for God. There are so many persons who men are breathing off, but not in the plan and agenda of God for their lives. So that's why God has a way of training them up. Bringing things around their way until they come to that point of the total change in their life. What I'm saying, behind anyone that is separated to God is predestination. 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 Behind the calling in a person's life is predestination. Jonah tried to run away from the plan of God or from the service or from the work God has given to him. But the more he tried to run away, the more God came for him. And he realized and said, all this thing that is happening is because I'm running away from the plan of God, from what God has sent me to do. And until he fulfilled it, he had no rest. What I'm saying Predestination will bring you to where God wants you to be. And who God wants you to be. Predestination. He has predestinated you. So predestination is not a function of what you have done. But a function of God's purpose and grace upon your life. It is not in what you've done. Stop looking at what you've done. Stop looking in your capacity. And start seeing how mighty God is to fulfill his plan in your life. Stop looking at yourself. Look at this mighty God. And he will fulfill his plan in your life. Or oh, Romans chapter 8, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 about predestination. Romans chapter 8, Paul speaking, he said in that verse of the scripture that you know so well, he said, For whom he did for you, that's to say, your hidden part. We're not hidden from God. Or oh, who you are is not hidden from God. He said, For whom he did for you, he also did predestinate. To be conformed to the image of his son. That's the, that's the summary of it. Bringing men who originally are not fit to become sons of God. God bringing them. And making them to become like his son. That is predestination. To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And in verse 30, and verse 30 he said, Moreover, whom he did predestine. Whom he did predestine. So there's predestination at work in your life. Whom he did predestine, then he also called. God cannot predestinate you and don't call you. God cannot predestinate you and not use you to fulfill his plan and purpose. Because we 
that useful in his hands. He said, during them he called, he also justified. Then he also called, and whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. He also glorified. As long as God has a full knowledge about you, there's no way you will not come into the fulfillment of His plan in your life. God knows everyone. If God predestinated anyone, He also separated them for His work or service. God knows everyone because He has written you in the palm, in His palm. He said, Your work are continually before me. I know you so well more than you know yourself. No wonder Paul said in Galatians 1 and verse 15 that we read. And caught me by his grace. It's simply the grace of God. It's simply the grace of God. You see, and he caught me by his grace. Because this man literally is not supposed to be caught. Because of the havoc and the things he has done. But he said, he caught me by his grace. To be set apart for God is a call of grace. To be called is because of the call of God. Which is all wrapped up in his grace. That's why every one of us must be grateful. So the privilege God gave to us to be called a son and daughters. So as men that receive him, but then he gave the power to become sons of God. So it is the grace of God that has made us to be called today. The grace of God. The grace of God that has made us to be called by God. Not because of what we've done, but because of God. Of his plan in our lives. Let's quickly go to Romans chapter 1. I want to read the verse of the scripture that I read earlier. Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul was speaking in that verse of the scripture. He said, Paul is servant of Jesus Christ. Paul is servant of Jesus Christ. But he was not a servant before. But now he is a servant. Paul is servant of Jesus Christ. My interest right now is that he said, Paul is servant of Jesus Christ. Called to be an apostle. Called to be an apostle. Separated. Set apart an uncommon species, one who has never committed a crime. It can only happen in God. Separated unto the gospel of God. That is what God looks at. Can I read the same verse of the scripture, Romans chapter 1 in the Amplified Version? I want you to hear it. Romans chapter 1 and verse 1. In the Amplified Version, it said, Paul, a bond servant of Christ Jesus, called as an apostle, special messenger. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The same thing is said about you because you are part of Christ. Special messenger, personally chosen representative. Hallelujah. Personally chosen. So God has personally chosen you. It's part of what you look like. In spite of your errors, God has chosen you to fulfill his purpose and plan. But until you come to this understanding, you might still be wondering. You might still be doing the same thing. But when you come to the understanding that you've been called, it will make a lot of difference. It's a personally chosen representative set apart for preaching the gospel of God, the good news of salvation. The good news of salvation. So what I'm saying is, nothing happened by chance in the kingdom of God. Nothing happened by chance. Nothing happened by chance. 
Nothing happened by chance in this kingdom. Everything is preordained by divine orchestration. Everything happens just the way God has programmed it to be. But do you know sometimes we can use our own hands, you know, to not to make the plan of God to be fulfilled in our life. That's why you need to watch it. But what I'm saying is, there is an assignment on your life as a believer. I'm talking to a believer. Even the ones that are not yet saved, God has a plan for their life. There's a call on your life. It doesn't depend on your ability to fulfill it. But it's all about women's ability. It's all over women's ability. It's all over women's ability on your life. One cannot function in his or capacity. You can't carry out the divine assignment on your capacity or your turn. If it is divine purpose, then it must be under his overwhelming grace. In order to fulfill his plan in your life. Because no one can carry out divine assignment by himself or herself. When he calls the person, he equips the individual. When God calls you, he equips you. He doesn't leave you without divine ability to fulfill his plan. He equips you. My friend, the Lord said something that I love, I won't forget it. He said, when God called him to the ministry, he said, what will he be preaching all the time? He said, what will he be preaching all the time? What will he be preaching? But thank God, over the years, more than 40 years that God has called him to the ministry, he has never lacked a message. When God calls you, he equips you for the message. He equips you for the assignment. When God calls you, he equips you for the assignment. No wonder Paul was speaking in Galatians 1 and verse, you know, 11 that we read earlier. Galatians chapter 1. He said, when he revealed himself to Paul, he said, when God revealed himself to me. The revelation was not taught by man. Galatians 1 and verse 11, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I never received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So God equips a man. That man or that person becomes knowledgeable about what God has sent him or her to do. First Corinthians chapter 1, quickly. The book of First Corinthians chapter 1. We'll be reading beginning from verse 26. First Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26. When God calls a man, he equips the person. First Corinthians 1 and verse 26, he said, For we, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. You see your calling, brethren, how that not many Wise men after the flesh. Being separated by the grace of God is a proof of how God humbles the proud and the arrogant. God humbles the proud and the arrogant. When God calls a person, is a proof of how he humbles the proud. Because there are times sometimes we think this person cannot be used of God. But those are the persons God likes to use. They are significant. They all recognize. The one whose background is nothing to write home about. I love Papa Deboye's story. He, doesn't, he wasn't looking like one who become what God said about him. He came from a very poor background. He said in his own, with his own words, he said, he said they were so poor that the poor called them poor. What I'm saying, 
God, when he calls an individual, is a proof of how he wants to humble the proud and the arrogant. God doesn't choose human greatness to do his work. God doesn't choose human greatness to do his work. He rejects it as a value in itself. He rejects it as a value in itself. If it depends on human greatness, it couldn't separate you from the world and set you apart for himself. If it depends on human greatness, there's no way God can separate you from the world because you've been like them. But if all that he's going to do in the man's life is about him, then that man, that person would be different from the rest of the world. So to be separated to God is coming to the end of self. To be separated to God is coming to the end of self. It's coming to the end of self. Let's read verse 27 of 1 Corinthians. Verse 27. It said, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to conform the wise. That's to shame the wise. Those who think they are wise in their own eyes. Those who think they are very eloquent and intelligent. God uses the foolish things, those things that people call irrelevant, very un not useful. Those are the persons God used to fulfill his plan. I read again, he said, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to conform the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to conform the things which are mighty. God chooses the weak things. It means those who the world consider as nobody. Those who the world consider you don't have a background. You are not good enough. You are less than the qualification that we are looking for. Those who people consider as not important. Those are the persons God is looking for because there is a predestination on their life for his purpose. Why is God calling or choosing the weak things to prove the power of his word? I can quickly tell you an example. A man called Moses. Moses was an Hebrew. He was born. At the time he was born. And because they wanted to kill all the male children, his mother healed him. In Egypt. They were in Egypt then. The mother healed him. But after three months, the mother put, you know, had to let him go and bought what carefully in Exodus chapter 2. If you read that verse from the beginning from verse 1, you saw you see all the things there. And the mother, you know, uh, made sure that the sister was watching. And then the daughter of Pharaoh came to the river and then saw this. Beautiful basket and picked it up. It was a child inside, and the story, you know, continued. And while Moses was in the hand of Pharaoh's daughter, he requested for somebody to nurse the baby and all of that. But what I'm trying to get at is that Moses was, you know, nurtured in the palace. He became so mighty, became inflation, somebody to reckon one with. Everybody knew Moses. Everybody knew Moses, but within him, he knew that he was an Hebrew. Until one day, he was taking a walk and he saw an Egyptian maltreating an Hebrew. And he came there and said, Why will you be doing that? And then killed the Egyptian and healed him. Not knowing that what he did or just did would bring him out. And until one day, he was passing again and then saw two Hebrews fighting. And he came to them and said, why are you fighting yourself? Don't you know we are brothers? And one of them replied, we know what he did the other time. How you killed an Egyptian? And that made him to become a fugitive and ran away from Egypt. He ran away because of the fear of Pharaoh. You know, he left behind 
all the influence, all the things he had in the palace and ran away. And why he was in the bush and all of that? He got to know about a man called Jethro and all of that. And got married and all of that. But what I'm trying to get at, at the point where Moses thought his life is finished, he came to a point where he thought he's no longer useful. After all, he was growing old. There's nothing good about him anymore. That's when God appeared to him and said, Come. Genesis Exodus chapter 3 and verse 11, if you read that. The Bible said, God said, God appeared to him and said, Come, I've chosen you. When Moses was mighty in his eyes, when Moses was strong, influential, God didn't call him. It was not called. It was when he was at the point of nobody. Not recognized that God said, I'm going to use you. I'm sending you back to the, web, the place you ran from. I'm sending you back there to do something incredible. And the Bible said, when Pharaoh saw Moses, probably would have been thinking, oh, what has it to offer? But God had much something to offer to him. What I'm saying, when Moses was at the peak of his career or life, it was not used. But when it was nothing, nobody, that's when God called him, you know, to deliver the children of Israel from bondage. Moses was called because there is or the words a plan of God for his life. There is a plan of God for your life because you've been separated for the grand purpose of God. There's something on your life that God is interested in. So don't write yourself off because you are important and useful in the hands of God. I want to round up with this. You know, with what somebody said, Lady Huffington said something that I love to round up with. A wealthy friend of Wesley, she said something that I love to read. She said, God is not top down in his method. His plan is bottom up because he wants his messengers to rest in his message. Let's be on our feet. That's who God is. He wants the ones that he has called to rest in his grace. He wants the ones he has called to rest on him, not to depend on their effort. Father, thank you because I am what I am. I become what you made me to be. Open your mouth and talk to God right now. Quickly. Hallelujah. Precious Father, thank you because, Lord, you've called me. Lord, I am separated for your purpose. I am separated for your kingdom. I'm separated for your plan and purpose in my life. Lord, I appreciate you and I give you praise. Receive the glory, precious Father. Thank you because I'm useful in your hands. Oh, thank you because I'm useful. I'm an in important vessel. I'm a chosen vessel in your hands. Lord, thank you. Receive all the praise. Thank you, precious Father. All the glory and honor be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.